get your hands on what you need and get it applied, which is a pretty reasonable window, depending on the weather, um, right. um, for doing that. And hopefully you've got cover crops established um, so they can put that right in. Um, the best way to apply minerals in general, limestone, rock phosphate, trace elements, etc., is into a compost pile, into a bedded pack. Anybody who does animals in the winter, um, you can, you know, before you put your bedding down, um, put the minerals down. Put a layer of bedding down, they'll poop on it, they'll pee on it, and you pull that out and make that into compost. All those minerals are going to get digested in that compost pile, and they're going to be converted from their rock form and salt form to a organic, you know, biologically available form. Um, so that would be the best way to apply. If you make compost, put your minerals into the compost pile. If you have animals, put the minerals into the bedded pack. Um, I, what I do on my farm is I just put them in a five gallon bucket and I go out and just, it just takes no time at all to do an acre or two with any, anything you need, right? Okay, I need four bags of green sand. I need eight bags of limestone. Whatever it is, take the bags, chuck them out in the field about, you know, an even area and then go to that spot, dump the bag into the bucket and just stand in one spot and go like this, right? I mean, it's literally that easy. Some people get really anal about it. Some people are really, really anal about like even and just exact. And um, for me, um, if I was to try to do things perfectly, I would get nothing done. So um, just getting the minerals applied is a big accomplishment. I feel very proud of myself whenever I get my minerals spread. So I don't think it takes much more than just getting them out there. Um, um, the, if you have anything resembling decent soil life, um, it's all interconnected anyways. And these things move on the fungal hyphae and everything else back and forth very nicely. So I don't think you need to get worried about being too, about being too perfect. I generally um, do spread minerals about 10 or 20 feet outside of the edge of the growing area. I actually go from stone wall to stone wall to my entire property. But I would suggest if you're just doing your growing area and not doing the area outside of it, functionally you've got areas of high intensity and low intensity. And what's going to happen is they're going to move from high intensity to low intensity, so you're going to have an edge effect, which is the opposite of the good edge effect, which is that things are going to be lower, you're going to have lower levels in the periphery. So I like to, I like to do, I like to go out into the tractor path or whatever it is, a good 10 feet, when I spread my minerals um, in general. And you put the minerals in the fall, I'm sorry. I'm yes. Sorry. Sometime in October is generally a good That's window. Right. Yeah, I mean, earlier is better, but you know, you don't want to be spreading trace elements on top of your lettuce. Um, so, you know, when things are done growing, pretty much. What about things like copper sulfate or whatever that are like really intense? Like yeah. I wouldn't want to just grab that and, or is that, do you do that with those too? <laughs> what do I do and what do I suggest you do? <laughs> um, I, I violate a number of safety precautions on a regular basis, um, utilizing a certain amount of common sense and so far seem to be doing just fine. Um, the basic one for me is uh, if the wind is blowing that direction, I am not going to be spreading my minerals in that direction, right. which for me is common sense, but <laughs> some you're people... You're not worried about, you, you don't it's have certainly, problems with it like being too concentrated in one spot. So, um, what, how do you take five pounds per acre of copper sulfate and spread it evenly over an acre? Is I've done it really meticulously. Part of the question. I like, I like dilute it into compost, so it's a big mass. So that's exactly what I would suggest, yeah. is you bulk it out. So if you're going to be using gypsum, or you're going to be using compost, or you're going to be using anything else, right. you take your trace elements, those things that you're, you need very small quantities of, and you mix them up ahead of time in that material. Right. Um, you can solubilize some of the trace elements in water and put, put them out through a spray tank. Um, ideally, you want to be mixing anything that's a salt with a carbon source. So any trace element, pretty much you'd like to mix with humates or with compost, or if you're going to be solubilizing it, you can mix it with molasses or sugar. Um, in the tank and spray it out there and then it'll be sugar plus minerals and they'll be really get the soil like really excited. So you can even do it with a backpack spray as well. That's exactly what I'm saying. The particulate size is small enough to go through the nozzle? The soluble, the trace elements, copper sulfate, zinc sulfate, are soluble. Oh, so they... Well, isolate. some of them are soluble grades, some of them are pelletized. It depends on what you get. I mean, there's all these different nuances, but basically, if you talk, basically the way to do it is to bulk them out, is to mix them with something that's of larger quantity that you can then spread evenly over that area, relatively evenly. Very good. The best thing to do is to put it into a compost pile. If you've got a compost pile, if you do compost, if you have a bedded pack, the best thing is to put your minerals into that first because that is basically a big gut and mm -hmm. 
all the bacteria and fungi in that composting process will take all those rocks and those salts and they'll digest them and make them available for your plants much more so than they would otherwise be. So that's the best way. But just getting them spread is much better than not getting them spread. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. I think that's basically what I wanted to cover on soil testing and mineral balancing. Any other questions on that topic in general? Yes. One quick question. There is a base aspiration percentage yes. on the soil test. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, the base saturation percent is basically um, what I said, you have a certain number of bonding sites uh -huh. on this, and then, so what percentage of them are calcium, what percentage of them are potassium, what percentage of them are, are, are magnesium. Um, so that's reporting what percent you have, and then you've got the Albrecht. Basically what Albrecht figured out was there are certain percentage ranges, like about 68% of calcium seems to be really good. Um, about 12% of magnesium seems to be really good about three or four percent of potassium seems to be really good. So you can kind of ignore that section because the, the, the section right above it has, has it down in pounds per acre. Okay. So they've already figured that out for you and worried about it so you can pretty much ignore it. If you want to go deeper into it, feel free. But I'm confused enough as it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I try to give you just what you need and okay. um, people will start asking about, well, how about aluminum? I didn't see aluminum written anywhere. Where, does it, where do you have the target for iron? Um, so. Anyone who wants to push it a little further, I'm happy to talk to you on the side. But I think we covered the basics that are going to be important to people. Um, yes? Anyone, do you have significantly more than what is the desired value? How do you deal with an excess? Yeah, or I guess it depends on how much the excess is. Um, it's very hard to take things out. So um, my sort of general one-size-fits-all philosophy on this one is that soil life is intelligent and will complex things that are excessive as it gets more healthy. So I basically what I say is um, bring up the deficiencies so that the soil life can become more vibrant and vital and you know broad in its spectrum of diversity. And soil life is really good at tying things up. It's really good at digesting toxins. It's really good at I mean soil life you know what fungi eating radioactive waste? Yes. You know what bacteria eating you know sewage and sludge and, and oil spills Right? I mean, bacteria and fungi are totally, brilliantly, massively intelligent. They have magic powers. They are awesome. Right? I mean, they can do things. They, without bacteria and fungi, we're, we are screwed. But with bacteria and fungi, it's not a big deal. I mean, the whole planet. We can, we can totally straighten this thing out without a hell of a lot of effort if we are intelligent about it. So that's my basic answer is, you know, build the overall biological vitality. And you should watch these things over time. Um, come into balance. It's interesting to see it happen because it does happen. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> do what you can do easily, and then don't worry about the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess it's a little bit after twelve thirty. Um, can we go till one thirty for lunch and come back? I guess there's a problem. Some people brought some things. I think some people walking in with it's a quarter of things. one. What's that quarter of one. quarter to one. So forty five minutes for lunch. <clears throat> See if I can find more shot.